Hi, my name is Paul Thompson with Makeup Designery, and I'm here today with Louie with SNL. And oh, gosh, this is a dream come true for me to see you here. I, I, we've talked a lot about me coming out and doing this, but um, how long? So, first of all, how long have you been here? What? I started in '95, so it's been 23 years now. Yeah, it's been a long time. Wow. I've been here for a long time. Build, building and having to get do some fun makeups on the show. It's wow! Awesome. I, you know, with the shows have, you know, obviously are iconic. I mean, the things. We're, looking behind us, there is, um, you know, almost everything from, uh, you know, the last few seasons of, of SNL. What what for you has been the most rewarding part of what you do? Lately, the most rewarding part is getting to do some some of the really coolest characters that that seem to hit a note with the public, like, you know, turning, just last week we got to turn Robert De Niro into Muller, which is pretty, pretty awesome. Melissa McCarthy as Sean Spicer was pretty memorable. Right. And Alec into Trump. Right. right. You know, I mean, those are three characters now that, like, are in the public eye and everybody thinks about it, you know. It's, it's kind of cool to be the one that creates those. Yeah, I mean, you're, I mean, the actors are doing an amazing job, obviously, but you're really, you really make these people look like, you know, the, the real people. And usually it's it's subtle little things that we do, because one of the things about the show is Lauren doesn't like big, heavy prosthetics on everybody. Right. So everything is little, subtle, so we can still see who it is, but see who they're playing. Right. That's the that's the, the challenge is, you could, okay, I can cover the whole face with rubber, but then you're not going to know who was underneath there. Right. So coming up with just that happy medium of enough rubber, or enough silicone, sorry, now it's silicone. Yeah, right. <laughs> enough silicone to, uh, to face is, is a good proof. Finding that proportion is always tough. Wonderful, wonderful. What, what, you know, for, well, we'll talk about how you got started in, in SNL and, and ultimately how you got started in your, as a makeup artist. Well, starting as a makeup artist, I always loved makeup. And when I was a kid, a young kid, I think it was like 10, 12, I, I got this little doll, the Mr. Hugo hand puppet. I don't know if you've ever seen it. No. Maybe <laughs> it's an East Coast thing. It was called the Mr. Hugo doll, and it was a little hand puppet, but it came with prosthetic noses, scars, derma wax, really? uh, blood, and and you and spirit gum. So you could put it on the dummy, or you, as a little kid, you could put them on your face, and it came with mustaches and beards. So I would put mustaches and beards and stuff on myself and on the doll, and I, it was one of my favorite toys as a kid. And, as I got older, I really wanted to do makeup, and I started doing like community theater. Right. I did. Uh, Dad, my first real thing was doing a ball again, bald caps, which is what we do a million of here. Right. Uh, bald caps on Daddy Warbucks for Annie. Okay. And that was my first real thing, and then, uh, I started working for a shop out in Jersey, and then um, then started here. Luckily, I got. I was sending resumes here for forever. Right. I was always afraid to send my resume. I waited for a long time. Till I thought I was right and ready, and then I sent in my resume to NBC, and I kept. And every month I would call up the lady Lillian Hickson, who was the person who did the booking at the time. I would say, "Hi, you know, this is Louisa Carrion. Just call to see if there are any openings. Uh, I'd love to come in for an interview." Right. And I think I harassed her for like a year. Right. And finally, she was like, "I'm going to bring you in. You can meet with, you know, uh, George Mendes, who's the head of operations here at the time." So I went in and met with George, who does, who's he was a studio manager at the time. So I met with him and. Uh, who was running the, the makeup department? Makeup department at the time, I think, was John Caglione. Okay. It was John Caglione. So I met with, first I met with uh, with George, because I, I wasn't in the union. I didn't have a union card. I didn't have anything. So right. I met with him, and he basically said, well, you're not in the union. And when I, you know, and basically, you know the deal. If you're not in the union, you can't work. You can't work if you're not in the union. Right. So I told him, I basically told him that, and he was like, well, I'm going to give you a shot. I'm going to let you get your days. So he would hire me to come in and do disguises and beards and makeups on the Phil Donahue show. Oh. <laughs> so I started out like doing disguises on the Phil Donahue show for my first two years here. I started I think in 93, 92, 93 doing, right. doing that for a year or two. And then I finally got an interview with uh, with John Caglione, but he was at the end of his season and he was just about to leave, so I didn't get hired at that point. And then the last two episodes of the 94, 95 season, Jack Engel was the department head, and Kelly Gleason was was work was his key, I think, at the time working in the shop. And they right. needed an extra person in the lab to help build these exploding heads. Okay. So they called me up, and I was like, Yeah, I'll, I'll be there. Uh, and I've been here ever since. Yeah. Uh, they, now they can't get me out of here. Right. Right. <laughs> right. And I got a great team. Like, and, and your team, who mentioned them? Yeah. I've got like it's me, 
Brand, uh, Jason Milani and Brendan Grether who are here in the shop from Wednesday till Saturday. That's Jason over there. Hi, Jason. Hi, Jason. Jason Milani. He's my right hand man here. He knocks it out of the park week after week. I mean, the two of, two of us and Brandon, we just kind of hammer through, hammer through hammer. it all. Right. Usually it's the three of us. And then if we need other people, we all hire extra people to come in. And help out with the lab work. But normally, most of this stuff is done just about three of us each week. Right. And then on, on a Saturday, I've got a team of 17, 18 makeup artists every Saturday. Could you talk about like the, um, the experience of what it's like for someone when they're new and they come in and they experience this? Like a cast member or a... Uh, a, a, or a makeup artist. artist. When you what's, what's the usual kind of... And what makes someone an SNL person and a non-SNL person? Well, one of the things about SNL is it's so fast that yeah. like, I, when I hire people, I don't hire them outright. I give them a try. It's an audition, sort of. Like, I'm like, okay, we'll come in for a day. We'll see how you, you know. And I try and give them a cast member or somebody who's not in everything. Because there are cast members that are basically in almost every sketch. Like, Keenan Thompson's in almost everything. Right. Beck Bennett's in almost everything. And, like, it's such a crazy... There's some people that just can't deal with... It's almost it's not, it's not just an audition for you, but it's also for them to see, is this really what you want some to people, do? Some people can't handle it. Some right. people, I've had people that like, they're, they're just a mess after the show. I'm like, all right, well, thank you. Right. You know, it's been, it's been fun. It's been a pleasure, but you know. Uh, right. You know, it's it, it's like live. It's like it's like a live Broadway show, but now broadcast nationwide. Right. You know, because now we're nationwide. We're live in L.A. at the same time we're live in New York. So right. something mustache pops off, everybody sees it. Right. You know, something doesn't go on, and we, we're constantly having. That's our my biggest nightmares. Is it <laughs> mustache just falling off or something? <laughs> last week we were just trying to figure out. Last week, in the show, we had about a eighty to ninety prosthetic pieces built, prep, built wow. prep and ready to ready go by Saturday. That's by, amazing. By Saturday night, yeah, in two in days. Two, in two days. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, which is kind of nuts. But typical work week is Tuesdays are photo shoots where the host comes in, we do photo shoots and the promos. Mm -hmm. Wednesday's the table read, where we go sit around the table. At four o'clock, we get together. The cast, the writers, and the department heads all sit around the table and they read 43 scripts, 40 some odd scripts. Wow. From those, at the end of the night, at like nine, 10 o'clock, they'll pick 15 of those, 15 to 16 of those scripts that they're gonna produce. Two or three of them will be full pre-taped segments now, and the other ones will be live. So sometimes if they pick, like they picked that Shape of Water sketch last week, we found out Wednesday night that Thursday night we were going to shoot Shape of Water suits. Wow. Friday morning we were going to shoot Shape of Water suits. Wow. And then De Niro's coming in for test makeups. Ben Stiller's coming in for test makeups. Plus having to put together a whole show, plus doing lobsters, plus it was... So basically Thursday we were frantic trying to do this, get everything ready for the pre tapes sculpt whatever we can. We didn't start building stuff for the actual Saturday night show until Friday. So we finished the Shape of Water pre tapes on Friday morning. And then Friday we started really sculpting. Like I, I did the test makeup on De Niro. We made a set of che cheek appliances that we tested on Thursday. They were a little small, so Friday morning I started making brand new ones. Did you? And you were using his life cast? Yes, I got a, I got a nice current cast. You do. Yeah. So, but it wasn't part of the process. You didn't have to actually. No, cast. luckily I would I would have had to do cast. Right. Luckily, a friend of mine, Tom Denier, had just done a life cast of him for the Irishman. Oh, okay. Got so it. I was like, can I get a copy right. of that life cast? So I was able to get a copy of the life cast. Right. And we were able to sculpt pieces right on there. Ben had to come and we did his life cast. So you're doing all of your life casts in a silicone? No, no, no. 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 When, when we got a coast coming in for a life, we don't have time for silicone. Oh, right. We do a life cast in under 10 minutes. Right. So we go full three-quarter face cast in under 10 minutes. Wow. Get them out because time is... All alginate. Yeah, all alginate. There's no... T our new cast members, when we have a new cast member come in, those we do out of silicone. Right. But when we do a new, when we have a host come in, there's no time for it. I right. wish there was time for silicone. Right, right. amazing, yeah. We were, and so we were uh, asking also, you know, what, for a new cast, new cast member, what's, what's that process for them? What, you know, what do they go through? How do they? It's funny, I was just talking to, I was like one of the cast members the other day about that. He, had, he was saying how, uh, how surreal, oh, Kyle. We were just, when we did the fish, Shape of Water things, he was just like, yeah, I don't even remember being in this room. It was so crazy, because usually what happens is they're, they do their auditions, and then probably a week or so goes by and then they'll get a call and say, okay, you're hired, come in tomorrow. They come in that, they, they, either that same day or the day before they just got the call that they're hired, they come to me for a face cast. Right. 
They go to uh, whoever's the department head at the time right now, it's Jody Mancuso. They'll go to her, they'll do a wig bubble. They'll go to Tom Broker and Eric Justin, who's the, 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 the designers get fitted for clothes. And it's just kind of a whirlwind for them. Like as soon right. as they get the call, next thing they do is they come to us. Right. So that we have everybody's face on file. And do you keep everyone's face updated every year or do you go every unless, couple of years? I usually, unless they've gone through heavy weight change or if they've gone and had certain things done. Right. right. <laughs> I'll, we'll just leave it at that. I'll say, you come in. you got to come over on your life, guys. Cause, and sometimes they'll do it and, and then like it, they won't say nothing. I won't see sure. them like at the beginning of a season. And one cast member did that who wore a lot of prosthetics. He, he had something done and came back and I went to put something on him. Like, this doesn't. <laughs> oh, I see why. Yeah, you gotta let me know these things. Right. So yeah, the, we, that's the only about the only time we'll do it. Right. Life. I yes. see. Okay. Let me show you guys the. This is the makeup lab. This is where we. This is the main sculpting area, sculpting mold slash molding area. Everything's. We're in a high rise in Midtown Manhattan, so space is very costly. So. I'm glad that we got this much space, and actually we're moving to a new space next year, so maybe when you come next year, we'll be in the new space. Yeah, it'd be great to do, do a follow-up on this. Yeah. Which is supposed to be even bigger, more high techy techy. <laughs> there's, there's three, there's two big makeup rooms, and then there's makeup stations everywhere, and there's things being changed. People are changing clothes every which way, and right. everywhere, so there's a lot going on. What's the fastest change you've ever done? Well, we did Kevin Hart, we made him bald in two minutes. We did a we made a sil that's one of these is these silicone full right silicone caps that's made to fit and kind of we did a Melissa McCarthy the last time she did Spicer we did that whole Spicer makeup in two minutes and thirty seconds because because the sketch before that she was getting hit in the face with pies with the shaving cream pies <laughs> so she had to get all that crap off and get everything by the time she sat in the chair and the time she walked out the door was two and a half minutes. Talk about your greatest triumph, the thing that you pulled off that you were like, I can't believe I actually did that, and the thing that, I know there's one that really bothers you. Oh, there's one that really bothers you. <laughs> so, uh, so let's talk about that one. Let's okay. talk about that one last. Okay, we'll yeah. talk about that one last. <laughs> yeah. The one that I really, let's see, which one that I really was really happy with? There's a lot that I'm really, really happy with. I mean, shoot. Uh, turning Kate into, Kate, when we had to turn Kate into Robert Mueller was pretty, Pretty awesome. Oh, one of the ones I was really happy was Mikey turning Mikey into that that guy that was running for Senate that was like the child. Oh, was, Mo Roy Moore. Roy Moore, like having to turn. We found that out Friday night, and they're like, okay, well, we got to turn him into Roy Moore. I'm like, uh, it's Friday, <laughs> <laughs> and this is we got to have it ready by tomorrow. So, so we quickly rough sculpted some, some cheek appliances and a nose and put it all together, and it was pretty. Was yeah, awesome. it came up one of the other ones is another one was this was a couple of years ago and we actually got to do it again a few weeks back uh mike myers was coming in to do an old cold opening as dr evil okay. so i'm like okay i found out about this friday night so i was like all right i'm gonna stay up late i'm gonna sculpt some dr evil pieces i was all happy we ran the pieces mike came in that morning and he brought me one of the a dr evil bust one of his head his head cast with the pieces on it i looked at it on saturday morning at 12 o'clock i'm like shit my mine are a little different, so I was like, all right. I pulled out the cores and sculpted brand new pieces to right. match what the real Dr. Evil looked like. So we sculpted brand new pieces on Saturday morning and had them molded and run by 7 o'clock Saturday night. Wow. So we can put them on him. First. And, and that it came out so cool. And right. Well, we just did that same makeup again the other day on Jimmy Fallon. He called me up the next day and he's like, uh, the guy that directed, I don't remember, I remember who directed that movie, the first, the last movie. Right. He's like, he called me, he called, Mike called me, he's like, he called me, he said, who did that makeup? Because it looked perfect, it was dead on. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, 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 sculpt, so sculpture time is nothing. Nothing, okay. you okay. gotta know. How you, much time do you guys? I try in a lot, an hour, to, an hour, if it's something small, right. an hour, if it's something big, we, maybe three hours right. at the most to sculpt it, because then we know we still gotta mold it, we still gotta run it, we still gotta clean out those molds. Like those shape of water suits that we built, it was like, Jason and I sculpted those in like two hours, three hours. Wow, we roughed out the whole thing. And I mean, it's not exact. I wish we sure. I wish we had time to do it perfect. But and at the time, the movie hadn't come out yet, so we only had like vague clips of what was going right. on. And and the day after we we did that, they posted the designer that posted all these amazing photos. Like, Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so you're and yeah, I mean, ultimately you're in a in the very short window you have, you're creating amazing. Amazing work. I mean, thanks. It's it's crazy. It, 
yeah, some of the stuff we and we have to do it a lot of times in a day. Like we we had a when all Scarlett Johansson hosted a couple of a couple of years ago. It was right before Age of Ultron came out. Right. So they were doing an Ultra a sketch where she's it was like a it was like a crazy love story where she right. was full in love with Ultron. But right. we needed to, we needed an Ultron mask. Ultron had to come out. There were very little photos of it. Right. There were very you, you couldn't get a mask of it, and we were shooting that on Friday morning. So right. <laughs> Thursday morning we start sculpting an Ultron, not knowing what the hell Ultron looks like, and hoping that we'll get it somewhat right. And right. By Friday morning we pulled out an Ultron head and showed up on set and. There it was. There it was. <laughs> this is the it worked. plaster slash polyfoam foam room. This is the foam oven. I don't know what's in there. There's nothing in there. But this is our foam oven. This is old faithful over here. Um, the whipper. We we'll whip up all our foam. Silicone components. Uh, flammables cabinet because it's a big high rise. Everything. <laughs> everything At the end of the night, everything's got to be put away and they come in and check every so often that right. we don't have any flammable chemicals out on the counters. <laughs> so, Sounds pretty So awesome. has silicone made it a little bit easier for you? It has. You know, it's, just in the time frame. The time frame and yeah. quickness and speed. You, you can see right away. We still, go, we still use foam a lot. Yeah. But most of the time it's silicone. Even big head pieces we do silicone and we fill them with poly foam. Oh, okay. So that we don't have that this big silicone. Right. Silicone things on. Right, right. But yeah, it's made life a lot easier using silicone. Right. Uh, early on, everybody's like, how are you, gonna, you know, you're turning silicone around so quick? But we, we, I use a lot of kicker. Yeah. And even making molds, like everybody in LA uses syntactic doughs. Yes. They take way too long for me. Right. One of the guys in the shop came up with a dough that kicks in 20 minutes. <laughs> so we mix it here ourselves. Right. And, and it's it's a it's a it's a dough that we can we can make a huge head mold in an hour and it's demolded. Right. Wow. And it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it yeah. really has saved our, he, it's been a, a savior. Because making big stone molds really sucks. I'm, like, I'm getting older, I don't want to carry big yeah. stone, stone yeah, molds. Yeah. Like, we were just in the, the mold room and there's a lot of, there's a lot of weight in there. Yeah, um, that's going to fall through the floor one day. <laughs> it's gonna, I mean, we just keep adding to it and adding to it, it's going to fall through. The science must be so precise in this space. The, the actual way you run your chemicals, everything. How did you? How long did it take you to get that all buttoned down? And can you talk a little bit about thinking? Because you, you this, the that, that is that is a thing. Because everything's very. We're 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 in a high rise. We're eight floors up, so yeah. we're our altitude's a little different. When we were downstairs on the sixth floor, I had a foam formula that was. It it was Spot never on. fail. Spot on. I would run it. It would never fail. We moved up two floors, and my foam formula didn't work. Like it would it would rise. It went from like when you whip it, you would whip, you know, you whip for two minutes or whatever and you would get to a volume. I would whip for 30 seconds and it would be overflowing out of my bowl. I'm like, what the two floors? How could they they couldn't have changed that much? Right. But we had to redefine that redo and get a whole new formula, get a whole new mix, and, and it just we've we've come to everything is very well precise, everything's nicely documented. The guys Jason and Brandon know exactly what it is. This is the uh the silicone area, we've got a couple of molds here ready to, to blast through. This is the uh, the resins that we use. We use a Smooth On 380. It's quick, kicks fast, and it's really solid and strong. Um, we do a lot, we have our machining tools, vacuum forming tools, and this is silicone slash machine room slash tool room. Everything gets multi-purpose. So the one makeup that is uh, bothering you the most? Uh, well, the, the one that really, I, I, it just still bites at me is the ball, it was a bald cap again, but it was on uh, Conan O'Brien. Okay. And it was basically, they gave me two minutes to do a bald cap, a full bald cap. Two minutes, that's with makeup, hair, and wardrobe. <laughs> so basically I had a minute to do a bald cap. Right. It looked like shit. It was this, the worst. And 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 the the worst thing was he, he turns to me and goes, Well, you'll get your me next year. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Thanks. These are all the hair bins for all this is this one is all filled with facial hair for the cast. Like each cast member has their own bin and then we've got just bins of various hair that's archived and then makeups and hair dryers and illustrators and glues and all that fun filled stuff. Right. And, and how many makeup artists are actually working on 
a particular makeup that's really involved like that. Okay, say we're doing, like if we're doing a ball cap, we gotta do it really fast. So my record cap right now is six minutes. I haven't been able to break the six minute mark. Okay. For a full vinyl ball cap from start to finish, six minutes. We've done four of them and every time I still haven't broken that six minute mark. Wow. But yeah, it, and there's, it's just basically like vultures hovering. There's four, there'll be like four of us just hovering. Everybody's doing, knows what they got to do. Like once we're done, I'm done gluing it down and burning the edge. Somebody's coming over to pax the front while I'm burning the back. And then as soon as we're done paxing it, then somebody's going around with grease paint. And then as soon as someone's done with grease paint, I got my airbrush and I'm airbrushing the whole head. And then boom, that, 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 you know, but it's just, it's really, it, I call it choreographed mayhem because it's just, it's crazy to watch because it's just so much going on, but right. it's, 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 it's fun to watch. And uh, most of the stuff in here has been in my tenure of 20, Three years. How many how many molds do you think you have in here? And we throw away every every season. We throw away two dumpsters full of molds, which we smash up and throw. It's hard. It's heartbreaking. <laughs> it really is. But it's stuff that like I, if I know I'm never going to use it, or if a cast member leaves, I'm like. SNL isn't the only thing you do it's when you talk about. Yeah, I was going to bring up like uh, some of the other things that you're working on. Uh, well, some of the other things I do is I. Uh, I'm Paul Simon's personal makeup artist, so I go on tour with him whenever he goes on tour, and this year it's going to be his final tour. So wow. I get to go on the final tour. Oh, so we'll experience. Be, yeah, we'll be going on tour to, you know, all, all around the States and then in Europe for uh, three weeks. I mean, I've done some pretty amazing stuff with that man. I've gone, I've gone with him to, to Ramsala, to the Dalai Lama's house, and met the Dalai Lama and hung out at the, wow. at, at the, at the Dalai Lama's house for the day. I, can, you, can you say no, I'm not going to do it? No. <laughs> um, I was I've, I was one year at the 10th anniversary of 9/11. That year I was we were nominated for an Emmy, so I was at the Emmy Awards, and the 9/11 was the day after, it was on Sunday. So I went to the Emmys. We won an Emmy Award. Got on, left the Emmys, got on a red eye, flew home, had a police escort that bit me at the airport to take me to Ground Zero to get Paul ready to perform at Ground Zero for the for for 9/11, which is. Can you talk about, tell the story about how that, how you came to work with Paul Simon, because I love that story. Oh, um, years ago, like I started working with Paul Simon a long time ago, like one day I'm sitting here in the shop and Lauren calls me up to his office, he's like, I'm like, oh, shit, Paul Lauren's calling, he never calls me to the office, unless there's something going on, I'm like, okay, what's, well, hi, Lauren, what's going on? He's like, can you go do uh, Paul Simon's makeup? I'm like, yeah, sure, and he's like, and can you do his hair too? I'm like, but I don't do hair, he's like, what do you do? You'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I mean, I'll do his hair, and I was just really making sure it's like no flyaways, nothing right. crazy. Right. And I've been with him now ever since for 17 years, 16 wow. years now. And he, they talk about arranging the SNL schedule around well, his they, tours. It's like if, like if when, uh, sorry, when there's like, he's really good with me. Like whenever, if they try and schedule the shows, they know I got SNL and they know that I've got to do stuff. So. If I've got to go do SNL, I'll fly out on a Sunday, be on the tour till Wednesday night, fly back Thursday morning, come to SNL Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then get back on a plane Friday or Sunday morning. It's to be back and forth to be, and it's really, it's pretty awesome. It's, it's, it's got to be intense too. I mean, it's, it's you don't sleep hard, hard on your family too. That's saying. the worst part is being yeah. away for, you know, for two months. I have kids. Own, I have three boys. Yeah. yeah so it's and my wife and I'm. I leave them at home and I'm like, like I'll be gone. SNL ends on the 17th. The 19th, I'm going to be on tour for two and a half months. Wow. You know, and I barely see them at all. So it's, it's, that's the toughest part of it all. And you're you're also doing a project with uh, uh, Mike Myers. Mike Myers. Yeah, I, I've been working with Mike for quite a few years. Uh, we did I worked with him briefly on. Uh, we did a character for Bohemian Rhapsody out in London. So we flew out to London to do this one cool character that he plays. He plays like this uh, record producer, which is fun. And then I also do design his makeup for The Gong Show that right. shoots out in L.A. Um, he's, he plays a character called Tommy Maitland. And Tommy's this old English comedian that's, you know, really kind of vulgar and kind yeah. of fun. Yeah. And he gets a big chin, big nose, eyebrow covers, fun wig. and it's, it's a great makeup. It's Thanks. really it's, a great makeup. It's you know, it was very, very believable. Yeah, and, and it's and it's fun because you know he's just having a good, he's just having fun with it. That's the best part is that he's just having a good time. Right. And then I also did a movie with him that's coming out. I think it's coming out in a couple months. Terminal. It's him, uh, Margot Robbie, uh, Simon Pegg, mm -hmm. and actually he plays. I don't want. Right. 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 But he he has a character and he has 
this this crazy like custodian of, a, of the subway terminal and he it's a whole prosthetic that I designed and somebody in Budapest applied it because I couldn't go out because of right. SNL but, right. but we, we he comes in with the design makeup for him and, and it was fun it's, it's been a fun thing and so you're running the shop here the whole department and for fun you have another shop and yeah. other films that you do out of out that of, shop yeah Okay, that's yeah, so I, I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> you know, luckily, a lot yeah, of I don't really think you stay. Really, I really don't think that. Or he's yeah, cloned. Yeah, he's cloned. <laughs> yeah, still be running around. Shh. That's illegal still. <laughs> I look on Facebook. Anyone who comes to New York, us included, everyone asks to come here. Chris Nelson's been here. Uh, 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 I saw Kinsley's been here. Kinsley, yeah. everyone come. Why do you think it is about this show? Why they everyone wants to be a part of this? Well, one of the big things about this is it's NBC Makeup Lab. It's Dick Smith started this place. Right. You know, this was Dick Smith's baby, and now to be the curator of of the make NBC Makeup Lab because we don't just do Saturday Night Live. We also do the Tonight. We do the Tonight Show. We do Seth Meyers. We do the Today Show. Any show in the building that needs prosthetics, we build all that stuff for them. So. Right. And it's kind of, you know, it's, it's kind of an honor to be, like if you say I've got Dick Smith's life cast on the wall in here. It's his legacy, it's, it's what he started, and I'm glad to be part of it. Here, that's one of Dick Smith's makeups. I don't know if that's the peak, Dick Smith's peak Dom makeup. I have the original molds here. And I, uh, that's one of Dick's original molds. So we keep this around just as inspiration. Advice for someone starting out. So we, we have a lot of students here in New York. Um, obviously, this I would think would be a dream job for them. You know, not necessarily SNL, but you know, what would be your advice now for them leading into the industry today? Be well rounded. There's so many artists that come that I interview, and they're like, "Oh, I can do oh, my beauty book is this, and I can do this, and I can do this glam." Okay, but in film and theater and TV, there's a little more than glam. You got to know how to do, you know, out of kit trauma, straight makeup, corrective makeup on just normal nothing so over the top and how to lay it put on a mustache how to lay a beard now yeah i'm not saying know how to be amazing at it but know how to do it there there are a lot of most when i interview people here i like to hire people that know a little bit about everything they don't have to be masters of prosthetics masters right. of but just to know okay if i glue something on and i got to leave somebody on set they can cover it for me right. they know how to fix something if the mustache is coming loose so i hired somebody once like oh i i I'm great at this, and, and they put on a mustache and they put it lace side out. I'm like, why is that? What did you? They're like, oh, I put the mustache. I'm like, no, no, it's this way. Right. You're a specialist. Thank you. Right. We'll see you soon. <laughs> but just knowing, uh, you know, try and try and be well rounded. Yeah. There's so many people that just they're great at one thing. Like in LA, I know in LA, like. They're either you, you, in the yeah. shop, you're making molds, you're sculpting, you're painting. Here in New York, you do everything. Even in the shop, you, you sculpt, you mold, you paint, you run the pieces, you apply the pieces. We kind of do everything here. Right. And even with, in the makeup room, you got to, you know, sometimes if some of the girls, like uh, Kate McKinnon, she plays guys half the time. Right. <laughs> so she's getting facial hair, she's getting beard, she's getting prosthetics. So the person that's got her has to be able to know how to make her look beautiful but also know how to put a beard on her and know how to put right. this on so everybody to know a little bit of all that really is truly helpful best advice for me